Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. I know it's been a long time. I've been away for almost six weeks, but I have to tell you, I really appreciate all those emails and texts and phone calls I get from, uh, from our audience that say, where have you been? Are you okay? And all that stuff. As you can see, I'm fine. I spent the last three and a half weeks in Italy with our family. I went to actually do some work in Italy. Mr. IRS, are you listening? Uh, but I did visit a factory that absolutely is amazing. They are developing a weave in their material in clothing that is infrared. And the infrared is to help any type of trauma that you receive from, from your muscles. Uh, it's fascinating, and uh, those of you who know me well know that I will always be looking for new things to do. And this is a product that uh, we saw in Italy. We're bringing it to China at the end of October to uh, get a production and manufacturing facility there. And then we're going to do a worldwide marketing effort. So those of you who exercise a lot, you're going to be seeing a new line. It's called ACAPI, A-C-C-A-P-I. You can look at it online, but it's not available anywhere except in Italy, but will be available shortly. So let me introduce my guest to you. As you know, after being in Italy, you could probably tell I've gained a pound or two because lots of pasta and lots of great food. And I am a foodie. I love to eat and I love to eat well, but I'm learning to eat healthier. And one of the people who I think has really influenced me in the last few months because I've gotten to know him well is our guest, Lauren. Lauren, hey. welcome to Seymour's hey, World. Thanks for having me on. Lauren Shoup is a entrepreneur, probably the ultimate of entrepreneurs <laughs> because when I went to visit you the first time and I went to see your factory and I went to see your business, yeah. I've never seen anybody who had so many fingers and so <laughs> many pies doing so many things. Yeah. And I said to you at that time, how can you do it all? Yeah. <laughs> and then my wife reminded me when I came home, she said, you're just like him. You're yeah. doing so many things yeah. all the time. And Lauren, I, I admire you for doing that well, because you. it's yeah. not easy. No. It's very yeah. difficult to manage your rental business, manage your food business, yeah. manage a retail business. Yeah. <laughs> manage a manufacturing business. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it is really, really amazing. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, let's tell the audience a little bit about who you are, where you came from. Um, well, again, my name is Lauren Shoup. I was uh, born and raised over on the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, I was there, I you know, finished high school there, and then um, I decided to go up to the mainland for a few years. So I spent like three years up in San Diego. Um, but it just didn't didn't feel right, you know. Again, I was born and raised in Hawaii. My family's like fishing, so I was like fishing, doing a lot of like outdoors activities, and uh, played a lot of baseball and sports. But when I got to San Diego, it just sounds kind of weird. But it was the first time I ever had jeans. You know, I had to wear jeans because it was cold. <laughs> no so I, shorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was that was all news to me. So that was a little different. Um, and the plan was to go to school, but I ended up uh, actually not going to school up there. Um, I just, I just really wanted to get out and like, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit, I just really wanted to get out, do my own thing. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I just, I was like, oh, you know, at the time, the school's not for me. I just want to get out and do something. And um, so anyways, I, you know, I just, I spent three years in San Diego and I decided like, well, if I really do want to do something, um, this isn't the place for me. So I got to go, you know, where do I want to go? So I ended up coming back to Oahu. So I've been here for seven years now. Um, and yeah, it's been rocking you've ever done, since. You've done fantastic. I mean, yeah. when I look at your business, and as a business consultant, I walk into every business I yeah. look at with a with eyes of what are they doing wrong, not yes. what they're doing yeah. right, because yeah. obviously you're doing something right to yeah. be in business today, yeah. and what you were doing wrong. And I couldn't find very much that you were doing wrong. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you are really taking a whole new product and bringing it to the marketplace mm -hmm. where big, huge companies aren't able to do it. Yeah. So I want to talk about breadfruit. Yes. Now, yep. people don't know what breadfruit are. Maybe you could show people what it is. Um, yeah, so we got this guy here. It's um, a breadfruit here in Hawaii. We call it ulu. Um, but all over the world, they have different names for it, and there's just hundreds of different varieties. Um, this guy here looks like it's a young uh, ma'afala variety. Um, could be a little mixture. It's hard to tell these days because everything's gotten uh, really mixed up with, you know, genes mm -hmm. and... Uh, what not, but um, I believe this is close to follow, maybe mixed with something else, but this is breadfruit. So um, the whole thing is edible. You can eat it at all stages. Um, this is a little underripe, so I would like it to be more ripe for our products, like the, the chips and our ulu hummus. 
Um, but this is grown all over the world, like the trop um, all around the tropics, like South Pacific, obviously here in Hawaii. They have Jamaica, Puerto Rico. And the thing is, a lot of these places are already eating it in vast amounts. But here in Hawaii, I mean, we know about it, but people in America, they're probably oblivious to it, you know, and it's... Um, it's so you are bringing a brand new product to the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. And the first time we tasted this was at our house, yeah, and you came yeah. for dinner one night, and you brought us the hummus, yeah. and you brought us the chips. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were six of us or eight of us yeah. at the time, and I could not believe how <laughs> delicious the flavor was. Yeah, yeah. Not just, now the hummus you make, we'll talk about mm -hmm, that, sure. but tell us about how you make the chips. Yeah, so these chips, so I take the ulu um, raw, um, we have a, I used to do it by hand with a meat slicer, never want to do that again. That was way, way too much work. We actually uh, have a picture of that, don't we? Uh, I think, Well, we'll sure. anyways, yeah, yeah, we yeah. might have one of those. Oh, that's, yeah, that's the mixture, that's the hummus yeah. guy. But um, yeah, this one was made with a different machine where, I, well, I recently bought it, but basically you put the product in there and um, you cut it in this um, triangle shape and it just cuts it, so it spits out these chips and then we actually cook it or fry it in coconut oil. So this is cooked in coconut oil, and all we do is add a little garlic salt to it, and that's it. It's very, very simple. How healthy is it? Um, well, I mean, coconut oil has a lot of good fats for you. Uh, breadfruit itself is very fibrous, um, so it helps uh, to slow your digestion. So um, it's not going to spike your blood sugar levels like, a, say, like a potato would, like right. a white potato or like rice. Um, what it has about a, calories? Uh, calories, uh, moderate. I mean, again, it's, it's good food. It has a lot of natural uh, minerals in it, so... Um, it, it's just overall, it's a better product than like, let's say, like a rice um, has a lot more nutrients or than potatoes. rice would or a potato. Yes, yeah, so. I'm learning as I'm going through a change in my diet yeah. that calories are not the most important. Thing. No, yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried about the calorie amount. Cal what's in the calorie that counts? Right. You know, it's like like alcohol. They call it empty calories, right? right. There's not minerals and. Um, but and with breadfruit, it. we're finding uh, not only does it taste much, much better than a potato chip, yeah. it doesn't leave that salty taste in yeah. your mouth. Well, that's, like that's um, I mean, that's our manufacturer. I mean, you can make it taste however you want, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just the way that we do it. I feel like a light, light um, salt. And like I said, we use uh, coconut oil, which I've tried the other oil. So I, it's not that I just pick coconut oil because it was good. It was also because it tasted better, too. So and it has like a really buttery flavor. Um, the chips are only at farmer's markets. So we do like KCC every Saturday morning. Um, we do uh, Kailua on Sundays, Kailua on Thursdays, Windward Mall Wednesday, Sunday. So the chips right now, um, well, the problem with the chips is we can only make them seasonally um, because I want the fresh fruit and breadfruit is seasonal. So that's one issue uh, we have with the breadfruit products. So um, I could spend a lot of money and do a lot of stuff to make it have it all year round, but I are just not there right now. So this is a seasonal item. So there is like maybe four months out of the year where I just won't have chips and people are not very happy about that. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about that from my consulting point of view. Yeah. How do we make it? where you could bring this to market and it's available uh, for, through the convenience store market, for instance, through yeah. the supermarket <laughs> chains, even on Amazon and yeah. you know that kind of stuff. And obviously, lack of the product availability becomes the weakest part of your business. Yes, chain. yes. And it's something that we're going to attack or I'm trying to help you yeah, realize no, we're, a way to move yeah, it forward, on it. right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's very, very important. And here, uh, for those of you who do not live in Hawaii, who are watching this from the mainland or in Europe or in Asia, Asia, uh, Hawaii has a huge, huge community of native Hawaiian people, and they own uh, acres and acres, thousands of acres of land. And what uh, Lauren is doing and what I'm encouraging him to do is to basically work with the Hawaiian community to uh, begin a breadfruit processing center, yeah. meaning let them grow the breadfruit, let them process it. You guarantee that you'll buy all of their product that they can make, mm -hmm. and then you can make that product available for the supermarket chains, regular retail, et cetera. Yeah. Do you like that idea? Um, yeah, that, that's definitely one of the ideas. Um, I, again, I want everyone to make money too, so I don't want to feel like, oh, we're just stealing the land from the farmers and then they don't get paid. I want everyone to feel like it's all a part. We're all in one big group, you know, kind of mm -hmm. pushing the breadfruit thing. But again, I think the breadfruit product could be worldwide, so it's, I feel like it could be a really big, uh, big industry, plus with all the gluten-free things going on right now, which this product is gluten-free. Um, so there's a big market for it. So yes, so if we, you know, you use that land, have, you know, the native Hawaiian people and just people of Hawaii in general, like work on it, uh, we can grow their products. And it's agroforestry too, which means you could have like a breadfruit tree with like cacao underneath it, or you can grow other things too. It doesn't have to be just right, breadfruit. Right, because it, it grows on yeah. a tree. So, I have to tell you, uh, 
uh, uh, I went on a trip to the mainland. Mm -hmm. I think you remember I went up to Whistler, yes, British yes. Columbia, and uh, I brought 10 bags of these with <laughs> yeah. me, and yeah. everybody couldn't believe it. You know, yeah. they thought it was actually artificial stuff. Oh, really? They didn't <laughs> believe that yeah. it was really a very, very simple product. Yeah, it wasn't it's like a potato chip that goes through a huge no. bunch of processing. No, no. Whatever they put in it, we <laughs> still don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yours is absolute natural bread fruit. Yeah, it's kind of funny because people say, like, oh, do you add, like, colorings? Or do you add preservatives? I'm like, I don't even know how to use that stuff. Like, I mean, that's my response. It's like, what is that? Where do I even buy that? Like, yeah. I don't know who do I call. Like, I don't, I, I'm not interested at all, but I'm just saying, like, I don't know what that is. You know, I'm just making stuff that tastes good, and, like, my whole thing has been very simple. Like, even, you know, again, we'll talk about the hummus later, but even the hummus is a very simple product. Like, Let's talk not, about the hummus. Okay, let's talk about All right, yeah. it is delicious, yeah. absolutely delicious. Thank you, yeah. How do, uh, what, first of all, how did you get the recipe? And now you're processing it, and that you're selling also in the farmer's markets, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, we're in over 40 stores across Kauai now. We're on Kauai, obviously Oahu, and Maui, and probably soon to be Big Island, um, plus along with the farmer's market. So we're, we're in a lot of different sales avenues or places right now. Um, but I'll just say from the beginning, one is um, I was just walking through a store one day about five years ago, just looking at stuff, you know, just checking things out, who's making what, what's going on. And, you know, I go to the, you know, salsa hummus section. I'm like, okay, there's, you know, local salsa there. And, okay, you got local guacamole. And where's the local hummus? You know, like, I'm, I'm not saying it has to be, like, with local products. I'm just saying someone in Hawaii making hummus that's st sold in a store, like a right. Safeway, and no one was doing yeah, it. You know? using garbanzo beans. Yeah, and yeah. Typical. Yeah, forget the, you know, at this point, forget the Ulu thing. I'm just yeah. like, no one's making garbanzo bean hummus right. here in Hawaii. I'm like, that's just crazy. Like, yeah. wow, what? Like, it's a trend item right now. It's, you know, people are interested in it. So I'm like, I can do it. So that was my first thought, you know. Hold yeah. that thought. Yeah. <laughs> you can see why I call him the ultimate entrepreneur, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. So I was like, well, I, I can do it. You know, so I probably that day, you know, I went to the store. I bought just garbanzo beans. And I, I'm, I have no chef background, no cooking background. I'm just buying stuff, you know, looking on the Internet, um, recipes. And, you know, it was okay. And then, I, like I said, we do farmer's market. So, okay, I got to make it local, right? So I'm like, okay, local Okinawan sweet potatoes. I was making local mushrooms, uh, local peppers, mm -hmm. and just making hummus. But I would just give to friends and family, like, hey, do you like this? Is it too spicy? What, you know, sweet? Like, what's going on? Um, but it worked, and people really liked it. But I just never, like, pulled the trigger on making it a company because I, I know what it in takes to make a company. So I was like, well, it's, it's pretty involved, so I have to really, you know, devote you know, my time to it if I really want to do it. So I just never pulled the trigger. And I've always wanted to do um, products with breadfruit too. Like for the, um, again, it's like a up and coming item. Um, it's very sustainable, fiber. You know, it's a lot of good uh, aspects about breadfruit. So um, I was just one day, I went to this uh, breadfruit get together per se. Um, it was this yeah. farm. And then they, um, from my take, the guy was like, hey, we got a bunch of breadfruit, you know, come buy it. You know, that's kind of like my take on that meeting. Um, this lady from the Big Island, she has a great thing going on. It's the Ulu Co-op over on the Big Island. So they have a cooperative. All these farmers bring their uh, Ulu over there, and then they process it. Um, but their idea is to sell it more to like schools, like institutions. But when you started to make this, mm -hmm. when you started to make, I mean, you have different flavors. Yeah, and you have yeah. all this kind of stuff. So what you see it's, here, yeah, it's incredible, Lauren. <laughs> I mean, not only did we taste it, but I've had other people taste it. Yeah. You know, on the mainland, yeah. and everybody wants to know why can't we make this on the mainland? Right. Why can't we go forward with it? And yeah. we're going to answer that question yeah, after yeah. we take our break. Sure, right. But just before we take the break, I want people to understand that this hummus is absolutely pure breadfruit, right? 100%, zero 100 beans. 100% breadfruit. No beans. There's no beans Not in one. it whatsoever. No. What about the health? Um, I mean, yeah, there's olive oil in it. Um, there's tahini. So the fats come from, like, good places. It's not, I'm just... Yeah, it's good food. Again, we're not concerned about calories. It's just good food. It's wholesome food. Like someone hands you a potato or someone hands you that. It's just food. You know, you just eat the well, food. I, I, I have to tell our audience yeah. that you can't taste it, but I know my mouth is watering. Yeah. And as soon yeah. as this episode is over, yeah. we're going to be opening right, this no, up okay. and letting, us, letting the crew taste it sure, as well. Sure. It is yeah. so, so good. Thank you. Um, we have to take a short break, right. and then we're going to come back with Lauren Shu. And what I call the ultimate entrepreneur, yeah. how did he end up making this? How yeah. did he come up with this flavoring? How can we go forward with this? How can we bring it to the mainland? Yeah. How can you, whether you're in Austria or in Japan or in Los Angeles or New York, have some of this? So yeah. Yeah. we will get back to it in one minute. All right. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World with Lauren Shoup on Think Tech Hawaii. Be back in a minute. Aloha, I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. 
And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on Think Tech. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World at Think Tech Hawaii. I'm speaking faster because I only have a few more minutes with a wonderful guest, Lauren Shoup uh, uh, from Ulumano. And Lauren is the developer, the producer, the manufacturer, the, the, the head thinker. He does everything with breadfruit. And I'm excited because it's such a healthy product. Now, we're going to bring up some pictures right now. And sure. if you could explain what we're showing. Uh, what is this? Um, so that is a mixer that I got, and that's the hummus right there. We're making it. So that's uh, basically a final product. So that is our turmeric hummus. So that's all breadfruit, again, with like tahini, no olive additives, oil. No additives, nothing in there. You know, the only preservative I use um, was lemon juice, and then I recently started using citric acid, which is a natural preservative. Uh -huh. um, that's it. Okay. That's it. So we have a short uh, short shelf life. It's only like two, three, uh, three weeks. Right. So it's not, I don't use any preservatives. Okay, very good. Let's look at the next one. Yeah, so this is, um, real quick, another company I had was Oahu Food Hub. I'm a co-owner, um, and we started this out of necessity. We needed this to do our products, um, but we ran it out to other local uh, farmer's market uh, people, the catering people, uh, people that manufacture food, like cookies and poi. And how many tenants do you have at this location? Uh, probably 12 to 15, something yeah. in that neighborhood. So yeah. not only does he make his own product and do everything himself, sales, marketing, accounting, all that kind of stuff, yeah. but on top of that, he's a he's a, a landlord to 12 to 15 yeah, other Yeah, it's, it's other uh, like living with a bunch of roommates, that's the way I put it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see the next one. Yeah. Yeah, so again, it's a more, oh, more it kitchen more space. Yeah, kitchen so, space. Yeah, so this is our newest. So we have like uh, this, we call this kitchen three. So we have three uh, main kitchens. Then we have other ones that are owned by people as their space. But this is uh, our newest kitchen, kitchen okay. three. Yeah. Let's look at the next one. And ah. that's the breadfruit. So that's that's perfect. So um, like you can see, I, I don't know how good you can tell on camera, but that picture right there is a perfect ma'afala breadfruit that I'm going to use for hummus. That could not be a better fruit to me. When I see that, I'm just like, oh, that's perfect right there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that's a lot more of it yeah, right there. So okay. that um, comes from a farm up in Mililani. Um, that's probably about 1,000 pounds right there. Um, then we process that, cook it, steam it, and then we actually freeze it. Um, so we can have it all year uh, long. As I said, it's seasonal. So we're going to uh, wash it, cut it, steam it, and freeze it. And we have one more photograph. And that's the ulu chip. So again, uh, made coconut oil, a little bit of garlic salt on there. Um, real simple, you know, a couple ingredients. Fabulous. Yeah. I think that's our last photo. Am I correct? Yes, okay, so let's go back now, Lauren, and talk about the entrepreneurial side. What I like to see about how much money you can make. When are you going to become the, the Elon Musk yeah. of the breadfruit business? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, can this go forward? Can you make it uh, on the mainland, for instance? Is there enough breadfruit around? Let's talk about that issue. Okay, so I think um, to sum it up, I always want to support Hawaii. You know, I'm born and raised here. I want to live here forever. This is my place. But that being said, there is breadfruit in other places like South Pacific. Like I said, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, uh, Costa Rica, places like that. So I think it would be worth the idea to explore those places for making breadfruit a bigger product. Like I said, if I want to walk into sto a store in Minnesota and pull off a breadfruit item from the shelf, I might be like, um, uh, like instead of a meat, uh, like a, instead of like a meatball made with a meat, mm -hmm. you can make it out of breadfruit or something like that. Much healthier. So, yeah. So it's a meat. It could be like a meat substitute. But I want to be able to walk into Chicago or a place in Chicago and and buy a breadfruit product. How are you going to do that? Okay. So. I, Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all right. So I believe um, we could get started with trees that are already planted, already made, um, that we could uh, set up processing facilities in these uh, places like South Pacific, uh, Costa Rica, things like that, 
uh, you know, process the fruit there with, you know, cheaper labor. Uh, and these people are familiar with the fruit. They eat it themselves at home. Um, so they know how to handle it, cut it, deal with it. And then we could ship the frozen product either fully packaged or just into raw state wherever we want to go. We want to process in California, perfect. We have the frozen product, uh, raw idea. frozen product. You ship it to California, and then you can put it in the containers, label it, and then ship it out from there. So basically, we need to make the raw product somewhere, and then you can make the finished product like labeled in that part somewhere Which is else. done with many products yeah. around the world, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the idea that I like is that we are we create a new industry for Hawaii. Yes. Because as we all know that Hawaii is really dependent on tourism and the military, those are the two basic, and everything else is tiny and picky and yep. we've already lost sugar, yep. pineapple, mm -hmm. macadamia nuts are on their way down. Yeah. So uh, we, need to, we need to bring more industry to Hawaii. Yep. And to do that, breadfruit is a perfect example. This is something where you can have farms that are growing breadfruit Absolutely. in different yep. stages. So you have year round breadfruit uh, They're doing, um, Noel Inca is doing uh, studies. So UH is doing studies right now to figure that out. So okay, I don't know, have the answer for that, but that's what they're doing like today. Um, so they're planting trees all over the place and having people like you and me record the data. So we have like people in the field. It's just, you know, it's us, people in your, at your backyard, but at different elevations mm -hmm. and different places on the island, wet side, dry side, high, low. Um, so they can find out, okay, well, this tree produced all year round. This pr tree produced once a year, maybe this one twice a year. So where is the sweet spot or where can we plant the low, maybe at a low elevation, we, it goes in the summer and then the high elevation is winter. I, I don't know. Let me ask you a couple of business questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel the market potential is for this product? I mean, I couldn't put a number on it, but it basically, as you can see, like jackfruit is huge right now. It's, uh, it's the meat substitute and like it, it acts as like a pulled pork product. Um, I don't know the numbers on it potentially, but uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, I'm sure it's well over like at least a, uh, 250 million probably. So you feel that breadfruit can also achieve that kind of status because of its health benefit I, and yeah. because it's easy to process as well. It's easy to process and you get a lot of product from a fruit. Like it, it's hard to understand, but this is all food right mm -hmm. here. I mean, this is two pounds of food. I can mm -hmm. make two pounds of product or more. You know, mm -hmm. it's crazy that someone hasn't really done this before. It's kind of surprising. Um, and this tree grows in like sand and it grows in harsher uh, climates. Like it, it right, can right. grow. It doesn't need specific no, areas. No, it doesn't of, need to be like, right. oh, are you okay today, plant? You know, right, it just, right, it just right. grows, you know? Right. So um, I see the potential is, is pretty um, uh, huge as, as far as the like, gluten free, free thing is going on, all this healthy eating is going on, which I don't see stopping anytime soon. Um, but this could tack onto that train and be, you know, easily over uh, hundreds of million dollar well, product. Well, you know, it's so funny you say that because we looked at coconut water about 15, 20 years ago. Somebody mm -hmm. Somebody came to me with the idea. Sure. They said, Seymour, well, what do you think of this investment? I want to invest. And I think it was coming from South America at the time sure. or something like that. And I said, you know, coconut water, eh, I don't <laughs> think so. And of course, look at it yes. today. Yeah, you know, yeah, Coca-Cola just bought a coconut water processing facility oh, <laughs> for $460 million. So yeah. we know that if you have an innovative product, and Lauren, I'm telling you this from the consulting point of view, yeah. no charge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have a, an innovative product and you decide to manufacture, produce this product, mm -hmm. it could it could take over. You could really do extremely well yeah. to the point where you can't do it by yourself. Yes. You'll need food brokerages. Yes, yes. You'll need manufacturing facilities in different countries around the world. Yeah. But that's easy once you've proven that the product does yeah. work, that people love it. Yes. And I can tell you from the people that have tested it in our family, mm -hmm in both Canada and in the USA, yeah. it is an amazing product. Thank You've you, got yeah. something. Thank you, now, yeah. what else do you have here? What is this here? Um, Can we show that? Yeah, Yeah. so again, um, the kind of the way I got started with all this food product, again, I'm not a foodie either, and I think that's um, a good thing because I don't like fancy things up or say, I don't, I mean, I don't like or crave going to like really nice restaurants and like, oh, they use this oil and this saffron thing. I'm like, I don't, you know, okay. I just want food, okay? Yeah. So I feel like that's where our products shine is because it's very simple stuff. So people all across the world can like, it. it's not just a Hawaiian taste. You know, you gotta live here to like this flavor. It's just like anyone across the world could like this stuff. Um, but anyways, um, I, I kind of got started through this selling products at farmer's market. So I would, I'm from the Big Island, so I bring over uh, Big Island products like jams, jellies. I was selling those. It was really, it went really well. And then other people from the Big Island, you know, hit me up like, hey, Lauren, can you sell our stuff too? Like, you know, because Big Island's a limited market and Oahu is going to grow their market. Um, so uh, Macna, uh, Ahualoa Farms is one of those companies that i was been working with for about five years. So I bring their stuff here and then I sell it at farmer's markets. Do you package this? I don't, I don't know. No, I just get it in the box. 
I just get the product and then I represent them at farmers markets and to places like Whole Foods and Tamura's and things like that. So I'm a product rep along with actually selling the product. And yeah. that's just another hat that you uh, There's wearing. another one, yeah. So let's yeah. see, how many hats are we talking <laughs> I, about? I, yeah, actually, this year I closed two entities. I closed the Lee Seafood Company and I closed uh, Farm to Market Hawaii. So I'm, I'm trying to con, you know, you know, consolidate. consolidate. So I only have yeah. two entities now, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. a lot easier to handle. A lot, right? Yes, uh, tax is easier. Oh, Besides yeah. the 15 tenants that you have that you <laughs> yeah, have to yeah, manage yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I really admire you for it. I think it's <laughs> yeah. uh, at your age, why not? You yeah, know, even I'm at having fun. my age, I'm. I'm all over yeah, the place with the fun. stuff that I do. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And I think it's also very, very um, important to realize you're not going to be successful in everything that you do. No, I, I and, haven't. <laughs> and anything that you fail at has yeah. to be looked at as a lesson yes. rather than a failure. Yes. And once yeah. you realize that fact, then you're still willing to take risks mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll end up not wanting to take risks because yeah. it's you know you're afraid of failure. Yeah. Fear of failure is the worst worst thing for a business. No, I've I've done it all. I mean, I've failed. I uh, did the food truck thing. I've done a fish business. I've never wanted to do fish again. It was really hard to deal with. Um, so I've yeah I've lost you know money and time and effort and equipment and I've. I've done, I haven't done it all, but I've done a lot in a short period of time, and I want to stick with you know something well, like this. Yeah. I have to say, Lauren, yeah. we only have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to open this Please up. Please do. All yeah. right, because I want people to realize how delicious this is. Yeah. Absolute. I mean, it's just one of those things that I can't believe. Yeah. So yeah. here, I'm I'm going to do this in front of you, uh, people out there, and I'm sorry <laughs> that you can't taste it with me, but. This is amazing. Yeah. This is this has garlic in it. It has a little bit. It's garlic salt, oh, God, coconut so oil, good. and breadfruit. Three ingredients, and it's it's buttery, it's crunchy, exactly. And you just want more. Oh. Yeah, and it, and it's not guilty. You know, oh. you don't have to feel guilty about eating it either. It is delicious. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. So. I'm sorry to say you can't join me, but uh, that's too bad for you. If you want some, contact me or contact Lauren. Uh, you can ship this all over the place. We can. Right? It's on our website, a Hawaiian, sorry, another business, a yeah. Hawaiian, sorry, <laughs> HawaiianFarmersMarket.com. You can find the mac nuts, the chips, um, and a bunch of other lo small locally made products that I ship uh, flat rate anywhere in the U.S. for 13 bucks or for free. So you can find them on there, HawaiianFarmersMarket.com. Lauren, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on our show. Thank you. Because yeah. I love to see young, uh, young entrepreneurs develop their line, develop their, their product, get out into the marketplace, make mistakes. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. at the same time, you are going to do it with this. Congratulations. Right, thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure <laughs> to see you and thank you for yeah, coming thanks for having on Seymour's World. Yeah. <laughs> To all of you, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. We'll be back, and I have another very surprising guest for you uh, next time on Seymour's World. Aloha.